for projects that would be paid Can you hear us now? With the issuance of these bonds, outstanding full amount at that time would be $38.2 million, which is not limit. And that leaves you a residual city approximately $2.7 million. Uh, Dave, is, Dave Ferris from our office is in the meeting with city staff to evaluate a longer look at the debt capacity um, based on the city's three to five year capital improvement plan and that will be brought forth in the future. Um, the bonds are callable April 1st, 2031, or any day thereafter. The city is rated and currently rated a double A2. Um, you will receive another rating that is scheduled for October 16th. We are looking to sell these competitively in the open market that allows for national, regional, and local underwriters um, to bid on them. This sale is going to be conducted as a parameter sale, and that just means it would be conducted on a non-regular city council meeting. And the reason for doing that, if we waited for the next uh, council meeting, you have to have a 30-day or more window in between authorizing tonight to awarding of the sale. Um, so we are doing the parameters, and the, you would be delegating the authority to the director of finance, comptroller, or the mayor to accept and award the bids. We do set certain parameters. So the max amount would be the $6,305,000. There is a max bid of 106% and a minimum bid of 98.5%. There is a maximum true interest cost of 5.25%, and our pre sale estimate is 4.45%. We also do structure in um, maturities and how much you can adjust those by noting that we did put in the resolution part of the parameters is um, some 
flexibility so that we can maintain a certain debt service levy so that we can build up to um, smoothly increase that debt service levy and um, build for future capital improvement borrowing. Um, we just wanted to note also the risk factor is the stormwater utility revenues. Should they not be sufficient to pay its portion of the debt service, you would need to uh, levy for the, the debt service payment. Looking at the proposed schedule, we're here tonight to do the pre-sale review as well as authorize the parameters. Um, we will conduct a due diligence call um, right after the rating call on October 16th. We're looking to distribute your official statement the week of October 24th and we'll have the uh, bid on October 31st um, and you should receive your funds November 16th. Looking at the tables in the packet, the first table is your sources and uses. So it shows your projects by purpose and then estimated issuance costs, some estimated interest earnings, and then a rounding factor to round up to the next 5,000, which brings you to uh, the amount of the size of the issue. The next table shows the projected impact of the debt service levy. Um, so the first part is your existing debt. The second portion is these general obligation bonds. Um, just noting that we do on the far right side show a change in the levy so you can see that it increases two years and then um, drops off, but that is building in for future debt. The next two pages is the amortization schedule by purpose. The next table just shows your debt capacity limit, noting 2023 is at 43%. There's three colors there. One is the 5% uh, statute limit, and then the red is your 80% city limit that you place on yourselves, and then the green is where you're currently at with the principal outstanding. And then the last page is just a bond buyer index to show where interest rates have been at. So before I go into the TID amendment, are there any questions on the pre-sale report? Okay, I can jump right into the TID amendment. I know you guys are well versed in these amendments, so I'm just going to briefly go over this presentation, noting that the JRB held their organizational meeting as well as Plan Commission had their public hearing um, and consideration all on September 11th. Um, then we have the council consideration tonight, and should that move forward, the final JRB would be on October, October 16th. I'm going to skip the second page. That's just how we explain how TIFs work. Um, the next page does show um, the amendment. The north portion is the parcel that is being added, um, and that includes, um, is needed for the additional increment to support the TIFs objectives. And this does um, make that, so we maintain that 50% um, or more in industrial zoning. The next page is uh, your project list. This is in addition to what was already in the project plan. So these are the amended projects. Um, noting that there are two projects on here that have a TBD on there. So when we look at the cash flow in the future slides, note that these are not in the cash flow. Um, they would only happen should there be sufficient increment to support them. And if you want to go one more slide. So the estimated um, valuation is uh, just over 29.2 million. And that equates to about 5.7 million of value. And in adding that into what is already in existence on the next slide, um, you're looking at from 2022 through the 2036 at 7.4 million. There is an um, appreciation factor of 0.5% on the increment, and we do show a decrease in the tax rate starting in 2024. 
The next two pages are the cash flows. The first page shows without this, uh, this amendment in there, noting that um, should you not have this amendment and that um, valuation is not there, then the general fund would be on the hook for about $2 million, even with a three-year extension. So the next cash flow shows that valuation in there with some added projects um, and then showing that you may be able to close the district in 2030. And again, this doesn't include two of those projects that were on the project list. I can take any questions. Anybody have any questions on that? I think we look, or we've been looking at this one a little bit for a long for, time. So I think yeah, and, and you answered the ones with the with the TVDs on there that those are only coming into play once the uh, once the increment is available. If yes, it's if available. right, if you should have a developer's agreement sure. or the other item, yeah. Okay. All right, nobody's okay. jumping at questions. Hey, thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. All right. Um, then moving into the business at hand uh, related to the presentation on the pre-sale debt issue report. Um, we've got a series of resolutions that are uh, how those monies are going to be appropriated in there. Um, so the initial one we've got is authorizing the 465,000 general obligation bonds for equipment of the fire department. Is there any details we need to go into this with, Dave? Or? Um, I mean, these the details, uh, if you go back to the uh, pre-sale report, uh, Tim, um, item 5A, near the end of that report is the detail of uh, what makes up those. Or it should be. I will find it in the network file and share that on my desktop. Yeah, I think it has them. It's got them generalized just uh, as we've got them in there. But if anybody wanted to know kind of what it was specifically allocated for. Then I'll take a note on each one of them so that when the and these are the items up. that we actually approved in last year's yep. CIP. Yep. So it's it's been a while. You know, Often we actually do the bonding in the spring. Um, this year we've we've done a little later than normal, which is fine. It's just that you kind of forget what everything is for. Okay, the document I've had up, got up on the screen is uh, in a different format than the one Ellers would normally provide, but uh, these are the fire department uh, ones that are listed there. Um, the budget amount differs slightly because of bond proceeds and things like that. 
um, but that's a listing of all the fire department items for the 465,000. Any questions at all? Say, I think maybe um, when we're in regular council meeting that keep that one in the back pocket just in case. Yeah, I will have it. I won't close the file. All right, perfect. That way then anybody that needs a refresher on any of those things. And I got the size a little bit larger now so people can actually see it a little bit better. Yeah, a lot with the radios and was it this year that was that console to replace or? Yep, that is this year. Okay, all right. I know those are a couple of the big ticket items that were in there. Yeah, the, the council is something that they're still working on. Um, basically, they're trying to do upgrades on the, the water tower on First Seth. Mm -hmm. And they're finding that once they went out there, they think they can get better reception if, instead of going around um, the tower to go on top. Okay. So they're doing some in, um, additional work to see what that looks like and if there's any um, increased cost with that. Um, so the um, fire department is working with utilities on that one. So you might hear more about that, I guess, is, is the point behind that as we get an update. Anytime you go up higher, it's usually more money. Yeah, they wanted to go around the ring, but now they're thinking they might need to go up. And if they go up, they might be able to handle it with a different configuration of antennas. So they're trying to understand what that will look like and whether or not you know the tower is designed to hold whatever weight or combination of things that they want to put on there. All right, any questions on fire department's allocation? I entertain a motion to uh, recommend to council. So move. All right, motion by Ozzy, second by Greg. Um, any other questions on that? All right, all in favor, aye. Aye. And are any opposed? All right, we'll recommend that one to council tonight. Um, next bit up is the resolution authorizing 50,000 in general obligation bonds, bonds for library projects. And again, I've got that on the screen for everybody to view for the detail, I should say. And a lot of that, I think, was the new scanning equipment, the checkout equipment, I think, was one of the big things on there. Uh, no, that is the 2024 CIP that oh. you're thinking of. Okay. Um, this, the largest one here is for the uh, improvements uh, to the lot for the oh, outdoor okay. educational area or however they're calling it. Yep. Yep, you're right. I was thinking about the other one. Remind me if you could. It was for a shelter, right? It was no shelter and other improvements? I don't believe there's a shelter involved. Uh, Tim, do you remember that? Uh, they did put like a, a shed and then the cement work and a canopy down there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, on that vacant lot behind there. And I think they're working to run Wi-Fi down there as well. And that project should be about done. It's right next to the house that's up in the air <laughs> right now. Are they pouring a basement under there? Yeah, they're putting a new foundation on hmm. it. All right. All right, any questions on the, the library one? Otherwise, I'd entertain a motion to recommend to council. Motion by Greg, is there a second? Second. Second by Dave. Any questions on that? All right, all in favor, aye. Aye. And are any opposed? All right, we'll recommend that one to council tonight. Um, 
Next one up is authorizing 980000 in general obligation bonds for parks and public grounds projects. And again, I've got the detail up on the screen for everyone. Yeah, you may notice some of this work has, you know, already been completed as we go through these. We just haven't borrowed the money to to pay for it all yet because these items were approved in the budget. And typically what happens is once the budget is approved, then staff starts um, writing up the purchase orders for them so they can get things going, especially those items that have a long lead time. And right now, the longest lead time is on vehicles. Mm -hmm. But some of these things, you know, the rehabs or the, or the native planting and, on, you know, in the park and on Division Street, the North Park and Field, the playground is going in as we speak. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of these projects are underway or in the process of some of these trails you probably heard are they're working on right now. Um, so hopefully you know, they're wrapping some of this stuff up. And then one of the things we're gonna, Dave and I are gonna do is we're gonna talk to staff about any projects that didn't get done um, and whether or not um, they're gonna get completed by the end of the year or if they're going to go into next year, or if they came in over or under budget so we can balance things off here um, and kind of get a grip on where we're at. Um, for many years, things were getting carried over from year to year, and we would prefer if, if, if something's approved and the money is borrowed, it gets spent in the same year whenever possible. Um, sometimes things don't get spent because um, maybe the scope of the project changes or maybe availability is an issue or maybe it just the capacity to, to get the initiative completed in the year. So those are the things that we're going to look at um, internally going forward. I think as long as I remember some of them, you know, they would hang out there for like two, three years more at a time. So. Yeah, and I think one thing we kind of lose sight of is that especially something that we're replacing um, there's kind of a 10 well it's getting to the end of its useful life but it's still working we want to have the money in case it breaks down so we can repair it we can always borrow money throughout the year it's a lot cleaner if we do it through the budget process but if there's emergency purchases needed we have a process to go through that and sometimes you know, we kind of forget that. Um, but ideally, it'll be, you know, in the budget, and we'll go through this process, especially on the big ticket items. But as much as you try to do that, something always pops up anyway. So um, we're going to try to tighten that up a little bit, make, I know it'll make the finance director's job easier. And that's, that's one of our goals, mm -hmm. is to make Dave's job easier. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question on um, the Virgin Lake Trail. Is that the city share on top of the grant money that we got for that trail? I don't specifically remember any grant money related to the 2013 or 2023 CIP. I'd have to get together with Dan Glenn to find out. I thought we received money for a grant for part of that trail anyway, but maybe I'm wrong. I know we did for the river walk. I'm not familiar with any money that we got for the Virgin Lake Trail. I'm not saying we didn't. We, we can check on it, but um, I, I don't recall that one. Yeah, we can look into that, but we always, you know, try to apply for them because you can see it's expensive to do these projects. Um, and sometimes, you know, we don't, receive word of the grant until we've already approved the projects but that's money that we should be crediting because we don't want to borrow money for something that we received a grant for so that's a good point and like I said I don't remember it if you look at the one above it 
uh, for the river trail planning study, there was a 28,000 grant, the net of things. So that's one we're only borrowing 7,000 instead of 35,000, which leads me to believe I don't think we have any grants set up in accounting. Maybe there is one and we never accounted for it. We'll have to check with Dan Glenn. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right, anybody have any other questions on the parks and public grounds projects? I move to recommend the council. All right, motion by Ozzie. Is there a second? Second by Greg. Um, any other questions on this one? All right, all in favor, aye. aye. And are any opposed? All right, we'll recommend that one to council later tonight. Um, next one up is uh, 990000 in bonds for sewerage project. That so should be fairly self-explanatory, yeah, right? So for the stormwater, we have a separate fund for stormwater, and there's actually a separate fee for that on your utility bill. Um, so it's not actually property tax. Um, it's a fee that is with your taxes. Um, so on some of the items, they can be mostly or fully funded by the stormwater fee. Other items, the costs are split. Um, so on these particular items, this is strictly the stormwater portion on some of these, or maybe some additional costs that go into other funding categories, I guess is Correct. the way I would the, put it. The other ones are included in the, or the other portion of costs, if there are any, are included in uh, item number 10, R143 for street improvement projects. And then when we're doing the street projects, there's different types of street projects. There's the pulverization is one method. A reconstruction is basically when you go all the way down to everything and start all over with curb and gutter. Um, and often, you know, we do sidewalks when we do these projects or we do spot replacements on some of these as well or do um, fill in sidewalks that maybe a section hasn't been connected. So that's all part of the planning and engineering that Rodney and, and the team from Strand uh, put together when we're uh, going through our projects. And when we do these uh, budgets, we project out five years. Our goal is working with uh, Ellers, um, as she mentioned, Dave Harris, is to project it out for 10 years. We think that'll give us a more accurate indication of where we're going on our, our borrowing. Uh, if you get out any further than 10 years, the accuracy really starts to decline, so it doesn't really pay to get, you know, out 20 or 30 years. I mean, there's some items that you can identify as placeholders, but there's also things that come up through the years that you can't anticipate. The roads, um, when we go to replace them or repair them, we have a, they call it a PACER rating, so it's software from the DOT that we use to grade the quality and the condition of the roads. And that's really what Brett and Rodney and their teams use when they're recommending these projects. And then they also work with Stoughton Utilities to make sure that we don't repair a road and they come back two years later and tear it back up to put in their utilities and then it's all patched up. So we try to have some coordination. When we get into next year's budget, you'll see there's a lot of the pulverizations uh, because Stoughton Utilities financially wasn't going to be in a position to do projects with us at the rate they normally did because they're still kind of recovering financially from the lead service line replacement, which was expensive. Plus, we're anticipating uh, a lot of utility work when the DOT does the corridor project all the way through 51 from Coachman's all the way to McFarland. So there's going to be a lot of storm water or utility cost for
for that. So those are all the things that they take into consideration when they're putting their plans together. All right, any questions on that one? All right, I would entertain a motion to recommend that one to council. I'll make that a motion. Motion by Ozzy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dave. Um, any further questions on the storm water sewerage ones? All right. All in favor, aye. Aye. And are any opposed? All right. We'll recommend that one to council tonight. Um, next one up is the resolution for. 3.82 million in bonds for street improvement projects. And again, I've got this on the screen. There's actually quite a few, so I'm just going to scroll through. Um, I'll make it a little bit smaller so that we can see more at one time. Rodney, were we able to do all the projects then? I know some of them we might have had to rebid. Um, I didn't look at the list right now. Um, I, I don't know that we had to rebid any of them. We're doing all, uh, we're doing them right now. Well, there was Bickley and North Street. I guess were the two that. Well, Bickley was completed. North Street was not. Bickley's under construction right now. <coughs> We brought that through to the to the council. Right? Yes. So my question is on North Street. What do we do with that? Remember, we were actually trying to identify a different year for that project. I think what we did was we reallocated that fund to the other project, the Bickley Court project, if I remember correctly. And um, then we we will have to bid North Street again. But there's also utility work that's included in that, and that was part of the reason the bid wasn't acceptable. The utilities didn't have the funds for the unexpected amount related to that portion of the project. So I guess my question is, is do we leave the money in there and then? I can't answer that on the fly here, Mayor. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, no, that's I, I fine. Just, I just know that we did have, uh, when we awarded the Bickley Court project and we um, declined to accept the North Street portion of that project, um, there, there's, it's probably outlined in the resolution what we were doing at that point. And just talking out loud, and Lisa, feel free to chime in if it's differently, but I don't really want to change any language uh, because then Quarles and Brady has to change the language and we've changed the entire timeline. So more than likely we're going to need the money and maybe some additional money if the cost goes up. So we'll have to probably revisit that one at some point for the difference if, if the number changes. Yep. All right, any questions on streets? If none, I'll entertain motion to recommend that to council. I'll make a motion to recommend to council. Motion by Ozzy. Is there a second? Second by Greg. Are there any other questions on the streets portion? All right. All in favor, aye. Aye. And are any opposed? All right. We'll recommend that one to council. Um, Tim, I've stopped sharing. Next is the resolution directing publication of notice to electors relating to bond issues. Yep. <laughs> well, This one's just a general obligation, right, Dave? We have to. This is one we have to 
to get it all rolling through this resolution? Uh, yes, the public has to, um, I forget the number of days, but they've got a right to object within a timeline, and if they don't object, then we can go forward. All right. 15 days, looks like it's within there. All right, does anybody have any questions on the purpose of this resolution? All right, if none, I would entertain a motion to recommend this to council. Move to recommend to council. Motion by Greg, is there a second? Second by Ozzie. Um, any other questions? All right, all in favor, aye. And are any opposed? All right, we'll recommend that one to council tonight. And last one is the resolution authorizing the issuance and establishing parameters for the sale of not to exceed 6.305 million general obligation corporate purpose bonds series 2023a all right motion by greg is there a second greg. second by by dave any other questions on this one this one's the whole enchilada it looks like all right all in favor aye and are any opposed? All right. We'll recommend that one up to council. Um, last bit in is our slate of reports. Okay. Um, for the various treasure reports, I didn't see anything that I felt needed comments as I was going through it. Uh, do you folks have any questions at all on the doc, any of the reports? When I was looking through them, I mean, you know, you, you're good in getting the comments where things might be like, mm, that might be sketchy, but. Try to. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you get the comments in the right places in there. Um, Anybody have any questions on on any of the any of the reports? Well, just the treasure reports. The treasure report. Yeah, I've got uh, comments on others. Yep. Yeah, there were some, or there was like one in there where it was a deficit. Now I thought it was a little odd, but anyway, you probably put a comment in there somewhere or it was probably related to one of the ones where we were moving, closing a fund down and that transferring it out. I think yeah. that's probably what, what, what they were. All right, nobody's got anything on the treasurer reports, then um, the budget amendment and journal entry report. Uh, actually, quite a few out there um, didn't, it doesn't increase the audited or budget expenditures at all, but it's uh, basically doing accounting uh, corrections, uh, getting rid of um, project accounts that most departments uh, did not see any value to. So I put uh, comments in red uh, under the groups of entries. Um, so I guess I'll leave it at that. Any questions on my comments in there or anything else in the either budget amendments or journal entries? I didn't see any in particular. I mean, the comments were, were on with those and um, just some of the, the ins and outs for out of the, uh, out of the different funds. And one more. Um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh. 
All right, anybody have any questions on that one? I just completely lost my train of thought on that. All right. Um, then the general fund revenue expenditure reports. Um, similar to other months, I highlighted uh, certain things that I wanted to bring to everybody's attention. Um, and uh, something new that I added uh, this time, um, we're having some discussions with the Stoughton Fair as to their fair share of fireworks. So that's a work in progress at this time. Other than that, anybody have any questions or comments on the various um, revenue expenditure reports in the general fund? Oh, I know it was related to your comments and then like timing of when things were were paid to us or paid out. Mm -hmm. I think that's where some of the some of the things looked odd in Yeah, there, it can get a little bit confusing. All right. Um, balance sheet and revenue expenditure reports. Uh, again, I put comments in there. Um, just wanted to highlight the um, we're going through everything we need to for the sale of the Greenspire properties to Crown Court properties. So we anticipate closing uh, yet in this calendar year. That'll give us the $30,000 in um, reimbursement for legal fees for that. Uh, the Stoughton Area Community Foundation is scheduled to, uh, we're going to be issuing their check on October 5th at 100000 in ARPA. Um, I do have one question that we don't have to decide yeah. today, but I'm looking for some direction. In ARPA, the Senior Center was uh, given $2,000 for the laptop project. They didn't spend $52. What do I do now? Do we automatically tell them go spend more money? Do we take the $52 away? Do I just say, okay, it's done and, you know, I guess, how do you want me to handle that? Uh, the council president has said this is the bailiwick of the uh, Committee of the Whole, and so would that be the appropriate area to talk to? If so, I'd be adding it at the end of the second budget hearing just so we can not wait till April. Or if you folks have any other direction, I'm open to it. I mean, I'd be inclined to say um, just tell them to spend it out. They were, we were fully uh, good with granting them $2,000, so. The only problem is what are they going to find for $52 because then they'll go over budget. Right. That's the hard part. Yeah, maybe it's like it's when you get that prepaid Visa card. And you're <laughs> yeah. Got three dollars and twelve cents left on here. Um, I would say give it back to, or not give it back to, let the committee of the whole work on that one. Anything ARPA dollar, um, we just want to keep all of that out in the open. I don't have a problem with that. That's consistent. So. Um, any other questions on any of the reports at all? Nope, I do not have any other ones on that. Okay, and there were no retirement payout transfers. All right, um, oh yeah, last. Last thing we've got to do is approve the minutes from September 26th meeting, and I'll entertain a motion for that. All right, motion by Greg's there, second. Second. We'll give it to Dave. Dave, you got it. <laughs> um, any questions or edits on the minutes? All right, all in favor, aye. Aye. 
Right. And are any opposed? All right. Um, and just to note, I kind of moved things around on the agenda, putting like the minutes and my reports at the end. Just in case we didn't have enough time, I didn't want the bond ones to right. get delayed. Yeah, those, those are important. Um, just future agenda items. The single audit report that was submitted to the Federal Clearinghouse uh, today for acceptance. Uh, I, it, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to the uh, promissory note for Dejushu 23B in the next week or so. That was probably a little bit aggressive on my part. Payment in lieu of taxes, Crown Court has signed off, so uh, we'll have that on the October 10th uh, Finance Committee agenda going to the uh, board on the 24th. Um, Rodney, have we heard anything yet on, from True North? We haven't gotten the finalized specifications yet. That's kind of what I was thinking, uh, which just kind of Rodney and I were talking about it. It's probably not going to occur this year because sooner or later the ground will freeze. So that's probably going to be a next year item. Uh, the city policy for the rental charges, that's actually going to council tonight to approve the, uh, uh, not the assessor, the um, evaluator, I th can't think of yeah, the name. The, um, appraiser. appraiser, thank appraiser. you. Yeah, right. One of those A words. Yeah. Um, it, that's all I wanted to bring up on future agenda items. Any other questions anybody might have, or is there anything anybody wants added? That's, a, that's plenty to do, I think. It is. For sure. All right, motion to adjourn by Greg. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ozzy. Any other questions? All right, all in favor, aye. Aye. And any opposed? All right, meeting's adjourned. Thanks, everybody.